because if the glaciers are not there, okay, we can't make beautiful photographs, but what uh, are the consequences for the people, especially in the, in the lower parts? Um, yeah, when you see dramatic, I mean to the glacier. It doesn't mean the consequences are dramatic. And this is something which I really like to emphasize quite a lot, and therefore I like your question. I don't like to say your question was very good, but it allows me <laughs> to <laughs> emphasize this. So, quite often, and specifically before the IPCC error, and I was also part of a movie where I told the person who generated the movie, please do not show the pilgrims in the Ganges. And, but he still did. And his main <laughs> message was, when the glaciers will be gone, they cannot basically um, bath in the Ganges anymore, which is completely not true. Because most of the precipitation here is from monsoon, and the ice melt is during summer, so when you have anyhow the highest precipitation, which means that the runoff from the glacier during monsoon is not really important. It is kind of some percentage, but it's only some percentage. So overall, the contribution of the glacier in this part are not as important for the entire runoff. But you need to be very specific. There are other parts like the Indus and in Central Asia where you have the highest precipitation during summer and where you have the uh, highest melt during summer and the highest precipitation during winter. So you have almost no contribution of rain to runoff and there the glacier melt is of way higher importance. So for Indus, the contribution of glacier melt to entire runoff is, depending where you are, at least 50%. While here in, in the Brahmaputra, it's about 5%. But still, and I also want to emphasize, there is a, a, it really varies. So the monsoon is varying. And sometimes the monsoon is strong, sometimes the monsoon is lower, the monsoon is weaker. And the monsoon is not entire the, during the entire year. So you have, after the monsoon, for example, you have periods where there is no contribution of the precipitation. There's, of course, contribution of groundwater, groundwater flow. Um, but there, the glacier melt matters much more. So there is a period in time, and also local people told me, that there, even though overall the contribution of glaciers is relatively low, then to this season the 10% matters of the glaciers and the contribution rises. And when you have years with a low mon monsoon, then the overall contribution of glacier runoff is high. <coughs> so you need to be very specific in, with this statement. And there are many, many more information I could give. And one I want to give, and um, that's the concept <coughs> about peak water. You know, when a glacier melts, it contributes water and when the melt increases it contributes more water so you will have more water due to climate change and that's actually true for many many regions <coughs> when you have large glaciers you will have and you already have more water than in the past due to climate change but the dangerous thing is that when the glacier <coughs> starts or continues to shrink further there's a kind of a tipping point when the volume is too small and then the run <coughs> will decrease, it will decrease dramatically. And the tipping point, the projections of the tipping point in this region is about 30 to 40 years from now. In other areas, for example, the Karakorum, it's about 60 to 80 years from now. But in other areas, the tipping point is already over. So it really depends where you are, how large the glaciers are, and at what part <coughs> you measure. And this is really important to take into account when you do some um, planning of water use water um, management in the long run that you should not plan based on what you measure now you should plan what is expected in the future in this sense it's very important and the last point i want to make is regarding debbie cover if you're interested in 